Well, it's been a long, brutal summer for extreme weather across the United States. Anywhere from record-breaking summer-long heat, uh, the worst wildfire season on record, uh, tremendous flooding across the eastern portion of the United States, record cold across the west coast, and uh, we continue to see extreme weather across the United States and uh, the heat continues across Texas, but thankfully we see an end uh, to the heat across Texas and perhaps for the rest of this year in fact. Uh, after uh, low 100s yesterday across Oklahoma City, that front uh, responsible for pulling on seasonably cold air in the northern plains and the midwest is arriving and draped across central Oklahoma. Terrific news as we see one to three inches of rain expected across places like Oklahoma City in the next one to three days and uh, we will see a te temperature difference from the low 100s yesterday uh, to the low 80s today. So wonderful news and I'm sure folks across Oklahoma will be glad to see both the cooler temperatures as well as the good soaking rains and that will take a decent chunk. It will not erase the drought but it will take a decent chunk out of the drought across central Texas. Yesterday was a pretty notable day once again in what has been a notable summer for record breaking heat. Yesterday Houston hit 102 degrees. That marked the 45th day of 100 or higher, smashing the old time record for most days in the year, which was only 32 days back in 2008. We've seen um, that also yesterday was the hottest uh, temperature so late in the year. For Dallas, 107 degrees. Not only was it the hottest so late in the year, but it was also the hottest September uh, high temperature in 11 years and also made the, the most days in a, in a single year of 100 degrees or higher which was 70 days yesterday breaking the old record of 69 back in 1980 and we've seen a couple of locations both uh, Wichita Falls in, in Texas as well as uh, Grand Field in Oklahoma where we've seen temperatures over 100 for over 100 days this year. So remarkable heat folks, remarkable heat. You don't need me to tell you that if you live in this region of the country. And of course we continue to see drying out across the northeast while in the northern plains and midwest like I've said before we will see tremendous chilly weather over the next day, 24 to 48 hours. I'm going to pull up a map here folks of the weather channel. This is the forecast weather for today and you can see here the uh, the major punch of very chilly air indeed across uh, a large swath of the northern central plains up into the midwest as well. Look at that there, a 58 degree high. Uh, very October like across Minneapolis, only the 40s up uh, in the northern part of Minnesota, uh, upper 50s. Uh, all the way down into uh, you know Rapid City, Western South Dakota, and uh, a very chilly day, a rainy day as well in uh, Denver, Colorado. You can see here, folks, the cooler. Now uh, the front, basically where the pen is, is right along this area here. So we're going to see plenty of rain and that cooler pushing. You can see here, folks, the continuation of the 100s across um, Dallas and Houston. But this year will be ending soon as well, and we're going to be seeing temperatures push back into the low 90s, perhaps even the 80s in the coming days, as that front manages to push further and further south. Warmer air getting pushed up into the northeast today. We've got a risk of showers and thunderstorms because the boundary here separating the warm, muggy air and that cooler, drier Canadian air will be uh, across the interior northeast. So that frontal boundary uh, will be setting off some showers and thunderstorms up and down the, uh, the I-95 corridor in the coming days. You can also see here, folks, a person very, very unseasonably warmer across the interior west, uh, the interior Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and down into the Great Basin as well. We've got some uh, very pleasant uh, to early autumn weather across the, the Intermountain West as well. But uh, noticeably, the, uh, probably the highlight of today will be the soaking rainfall across the northern half of the drought-stricken south 
and the very, very cool air across the, the plain states today. Looking ahead at tonight, and this is quite uh, a dramatic uh, cool, uh, cool air push across the, the northern plains. In fact, we've got the widespread uh, rural 20s. Look at that there, folks. 24 degrees uh, across International Falls. We've got 35 degrees in in uh, Minneapolis, uh, suburban areas of Minneapolis will drop probably close to 30 degrees and therefore you will be scraping your car in the morning. But I want this, uh, you can't see it in this map, but see up across the Arrowhead region, the northeast corner of Minnesota, we could be seeing a temperature down to 19 degrees in, in, in Barris, Minnesota and across uh, Tar, Minnesota and perhaps even up into northern the northern woods of uh, Wisconsin, we will be seeing low 20s, perhaps even the upper teens. So certainly very, very chilly air, uh, unseasonably chilly air, may I add, for this time of year across the northern plains. And that's a sign of things to come, folks. We're now into mid-September. We're now seeing a marked difference in the hours of darkness at night time. And uh, we will continue to see this as we progress through the autumn season, we'll be seeing more uh, chances of that precipitation in the northern half of the, U uh, the U.S. become more frozen. More snow showers is going to be possible in the days and weeks ahead. And uh, we'll continue to see those cold fronts as they drip drape southwards from Canada. They're going to uh, increasingly uh, pull in cooler and cooler air in the coming days and weeks that lie ahead. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day today, wherever you are across the U.S. And uh, stay tuned to the blog. I'll continue to have updates for you uh, regularly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.